DR, The Audio Project is a non-profit fan-made series that is inspired by the Danganronpa series by Spike Chunsoft. We do not claim ownership over the Danganronpa series or the music in our episodes, with the exception of our opening and closing themes. Please support the official releases. Thank you for listening to the show. Previously on DR, The Audio Project. Your new Manukurasu rule books, or Mano books for short, have all been delivered to your rooms. So, are we all just gonna stand around wasting our fucking time because you guys are so damn cautious of each other, or are we going to be mature and talk like humans? Who made this in the first place? And why do they care so much about me? The audacity you have to say such a thing is appalling. Oh, thank God. Finally, my day won't be so boring after all. Nightmare at the Museum, Part 2 <sighs> Guess I'm still here in this museum. Not that I expected this to be a dream, though. It'll never change the unease I get from the building structure. Ahem. Ahem. May everyone please report to the lounge located in the staff area of the museum. I have a special announcement to make. And you all better be there. Or else. <laughs> so, Monokadazu wants to meet us again? That can't be anything good. All that comes out of that raven's beak is twisted words. I better go see what Monokadazu wants. I can't afford to get into any unnecessary trouble now. I entered the lounge with a sense of paranoia. As I walked in, I observed everyone else's faces. Some of them looked wary, while others looked utterly annoyed. They were right to be annoyed. Nothing good could come out of that damn bird's mouth. I'm sure of that. Good morning, Takuya. Good morning. Although, good isn't the term I would use, considering why everyone he's gathered here. You raise a fair point. I wonder what he'll be informing us of. My interest has been piqued, if you couldn't tell. Well, you don't hide it. But I wonder when Monokurazu will show up. The longer time passes, I feel even more unsettled. And it's not because of the poor structure of this place. Takuya! I would have shown up sooner had I known you wanted to see me so bad. Well, it's about fucking time. Chiharu! I don't want to have to tell you again! No language in front of your curator! Are you gonna say anything worth my damn time or not? Now, now, Lady Chiharu. I'm sure that Mono Karasu will tell. Tell us in all due time. Well, this asshole better start fucking explaining before I storm out of this shitty ass meeting. Some of us don't even want to be here. There's no need to get so riled up. All we need to do is listen to what he has to say. We can all go about our day afterwards and just ignore whatever he has to say. How does that sound? 
I'm in agreement with that, Seiichi. I would prefer if everyone could also keep it down, please. This is just inducing a headache. I'd prefer it if we could get this discussion done sooner than later. That way everyone can go about their day quickly. Okay, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've been waiting for. I've noticed that no one's been making any moves on anyone, preparing to strike at a moment's notice. Okay, so we decided to not go and kill our friends. What's so wrong about that? Yeah, like we'd fall into one of your unfair traps. You could probably bend the rules at any time to contradict us. The idea of killing someone just sounds insane. There's no way I would ever strike someone down. Guys, we can't listen to what he says. That kind of thinking will surely bring down the morale and send us into a negative mentality. Well, why would any of us k kill? There's n no reason for any of us to do things that in the first place. Ding, ding, ding! That is exactly correct, Mayumi. Everyone won't start killing unless there's a reason. <laughs> Luckily enough, I've prepared a reason to kick things into gear. Each and every single one of you has a part stored deep into your brain that despises certain qualities from a certain person. <laughs> or multiple people. <laughs> Take a look at your fellow peers. Every other person here has something you envy. Whether it be beauty, strength, intelligence, or anything else you can name. You find that you lack these certain qualities, but are too afraid to admit it out loud. Just remember, you're only ultimates due to your special talents. Without that talent, everyone here is just an average and greedy person. With no worth! And if you die here... <laughs> then that's all you'll be remembered as! A lacking, worthless person. If there are no questions, then I shall bid you kiddos adieu. The room fell into an utter and complete silence after Monokarazu left the room. Everyone was looking at one another with caution. Even my own pride was hurt at the realization I could have just been average, with no real talent anywhere. Thinking over his words carefully, the raven wasn't wrong per se. I was jealous of certain people. But acting out in a malicious way over those thoughts sounds inhumane. It's not even worth killing over envy, right? My thoughts were once again interrupted when someone finally broke the heavy silence of this room. I don't think anyone here would really give in to what Monokurasu wants us to think. Everyone here has special qualities which makes them unique. Plus, with their own incredible talent, which gives us the title as ultimate. Without those, we wouldn't be who we are today. Nor even have the ultimate title in the first place. <laughs> if we keep believing in our abilities, and each other, then I think everything will be okay. As if someone pushed a domino. One by one, everyone started to regain a feeling of confidence and reassurance. Their spirits were slowly starting to go up, thanks to Seiichi. Playing on human emotions is quite clever. Almost like pieces apart an already built puzzle. <laughs> yeah, right. Why the fuck would I be jealous of any of you shit for brains? That motive was considerably annoying. I already have all I could ever want in life. Also, if that damn car laugh won't stop soon, then I seriously will go deaf. You got that right, cuties. The divines above would not approve of his crude words. If only I could see the stars, I could present a message to that cursed raven from them, criticizing him and cutting his throat rather than the rope. We're all friends, right? Envy or not, I think everyone has pretty cool talents. A rush of confidence overtook me, and the tension in my body was let loose. Taking a look at our group, everyone regained their posture and looked visibly relaxed. For now. I just hope this keeps up. After the meeting was over, everyone slowly dispersed out of the lodge to go to various parts of the museum. I retreated back to my room, in a happier mood than usual. I sat in my room, drawing buildings famously on a piece of paper with estimated measurements. 
I rubbed my eyes and felt boredom slowly creeping up on me. I decided that walking around the museum sounded better than just staying still doing nothing. Organizing my papers, I left them out on the table and walked out of my room. And I quickly noticed someone in the hallway. Or rather, she noticed me. Huh? Oh, it's you. What the fuck do you want now? No need to be so rude. Since you're here, I just wanted to know if you wanted to hang out or not. And why would I hang out with you, of all people here? Well, we're stuck in the same situation whether you like it or not. Logically, it's better to stick together and get to know one another than for everyone to split. <sighs> Fine. But you better leave me the fuck alone for the rest of the day after this damn hangout is over. Alright, you have my word. So, what's it like being the ultimate race car driver? It's not so fucking glamorous right now. I mean, sure, I was a damn child prodigy when I first started racing. But that doesn't mean jack shit when the team's not fucking good enough. Well, why can't you just join another team? If it were that easy, then I would have done that by now, dumbass. My talent would be put to much greater use on a good team than a shitty mediocre one that doesn't even win most of their goddamn races. But I can't do that till my contract is up. Oh. The other racers on the team are... decent. They're not so fucking terrible to be around, but their personalities are shitty. I don't care about them, though. When it's race time, it's just you versus everyone else on that track. No one else matters. But my damn self, not even my teammates do, and certainly not my dumbass rivals. But go figure. The child prodigy who prides herself as being the damn ultimate race car driver can't even win most of the races due to a shitty, mediocre team. Hey, come on now. I'm sure you'll join a prestigious racing team and you'll win so many races. Once we get out of this weird museum, that is. You fucking bet I will. I can't just sit around with a stick in my ass while my talent is going to waste in the shitty museum and not being showcased on a racetrack. I'll definitely get out of this fucking place to show the damn world what they're missing. I'm sure we'll all get out of here soon. Just don't resort to what Monokarazu wants from all of us. Yeah, thanks for the damn enlightenment. Now, if you excuse me, I'm going back to my room, so don't bother me for the rest of the day. Jiharu is definitely interesting. Saying that she comes off as strong is an understatement. She's a real phantom racer type, that one. But I can predict she'll make it big in the racing world one day. I went over to my exhibit, just in case there was something important that I didn't notice last time. You never know what you might miss when you're stressed about being kidnapped. But instead, I found a person. Why, hello, Takia. What are you up to today? Oh, hi, Seiichi. I'm not really up to anything. Not that there's much to do regardless. Oh, and thank you for what you did back at the museum entrance. It made the whole situation a lot easier. Not just for me, but for all of us. Oh, it was nothing. Just doing my part. But thank you nonetheless, Takia. Speaking of, this is your exhibit, right? What do you think of it? I do find some appeal to this place. It's just... How do I put this? It's too well constructed. It seems like everything's brand new. No weak points or cracks or anything. That's very astute of you to recognize that, Takia. I find that amazing of you. It's nothing special, really. It's just that I have a keen eye for this kind of thing. It helps make sure that whatever I'm building is strong enough and can last a good while before needing a touch-up. But it is special, Takia. That little detail just adds up to what your talent is. It helps build it and that watchful eye can improve your day-to-day -day life. Thanks for the small pep talk, I guess. That helped a little bit. It's no problem, really. It just stems from being a news anchor. I just really like to help people whenever I can. Being able to give out news of an upcoming event that could prove to be devastating doesn't sound like fun, 
Which it isn't, I've had experience. But being able to inform everyone how to keep themselves safe is the goal. Being able to give them that help and that little string of hope that everything will be okay is what a news anchor should be. In my eyes, at least. That's really admirable of you, Seiichi. You have really good morals. Well, thank you. I suppose you're right. <laughs> Although, I wasn't always like this. What do you mean by that? Some time ago, the city I lived in suffered a major natural disaster. There was no warning of it from the news, so no one could evacuate or prepare for it. A lot of innocent people died that day. Luckily, my family survived, but after all those losses, it seemed like despair lurked in every corner, with no ray of hope left in the world. So, I decided that I should step up to the plate and start to... So, I decided I should step up to the plate and start to help people with their grievings. I studied and became a news anchor soon after. It helps knowing people can depend on you for delivering correct news and that everyone goes through life together. But there's also the weight of the grievings and bearing the bad news to those people. It was hard to tell the people of their losses, how much damage was caused, and if those people could ever really return home. Have I been rambling on? Sorry about that, dude. It, it tends to happen sometimes. It's alright. I assume it's because of your line of work or something. I guess you could say that, yeah. Seems reasonable to me anyways. Well, it's been really fun talking to you, but I should probably go. See you later, Takia! Well, he sure left in a hurry. Still, having to bear all that burden... I don't think I can even imagine having to tell strangers about the losses and all that destruction. If he claims that he wasn't always the person that he was then... I can't help but to wonder what about the person that he was before. I left my exhibit, going over the conversation with Seiichi with my head. Eventually I made my way to the lounge. There, I saw Sayuri, reading a large book. I thought I'd go over and see what's up. Hello Sayuri, what are you up to? Hmm. Uh, Sayuri. <laughs> Oh, hi, Takuya. Sorry, I was lost in this book. It's about the history and archaeology of ancient China. It's interesting how they have books about my talent in my room. <laughs> I wouldn't expect anything less from you. Say, what got you into archaeology in the first place? Hmm. Well, my parents were a major factor, as they were researchers in the historical side of things. Because of them, I was the top in my class about all sorts of ancient civilizations when I was younger. But what really got me into it was the opening of a nearby dig site. My parents went and decided to bring me along. Turns out I was a natural, and the organization took notice. That's pretty amazing. Sounds like you had a pretty busy life growing up. Oh, you have no idea. <laughs> the organization was so impressed that they ended up putting me into the best schools for history and archaeology. But I was constantly missing school due to my talent. I've been to so many ancient temples and monasteries. As much as I love digging up intriguing artifacts, the histories behind each one are even more amazing. That's the reason why I published so many research papers in my field. I vaguely remember my mom reading something like that. She seemed really into it, though I don't know if she ever spoke about it. That's alright, but I want to know your story, Takuya. What got you so interested into architecture that you decided to pursue it? It's not an interesting story, per se. When I was younger, my dad used to take me out through the city we lived in during the weekends. Long story short, each building seemed so large back then I wanted to know how they were built. My dad and I started building miniature buildings out of wood. Then it spiraled into what I am today. That explanation is rather incomplete. That leads me to want to know more about you, Takuya. You seem undoubtedly reserved towards the rest of us. Don't get me wrong, it's totally understandable considering the situation, but I just think you should open up a little bit more. I guess so. But with how everyone is so tense and no one can predict what's going to happen next, it makes it difficult to open up. I suppose. 
But where's the sense of curiosity? Opening up to people is better than to just leave them with nothing at all. That might be true. I should probably get going. I'll leave you to your book. See you later, Sayuri. Likewise, Takuya. Leaving the lounge, I can feel an argument brewing. I still don't know everyone here that well. And if the raven says people are gonna die, I don't know if I want to get attached. But Sayuri's right. Maybe I should open up a little bit more. Yawning, I went into my room and went over the events today. I tried not to think about what Monokarazu said, but it didn't work. This motive to get someone to make the first move is playing on human emotions, trying to manipulate envious feelings that some people have. Even though we all pretended to not be affected by it, I know it's not true. After all, I felt it myself. Whoever's behind this sick game definitely knows what they're doing. I don't know what to expect from everyone else. Closing my eyes, I fell asleep with an uneasy feeling in my stomach and unsure of what tomorrow might bring. I opened my eyes and sat up. That same feeling of uneasiness was plaguing my body still. That feeling just wouldn't go away. I headed towards the door and opened it, only to be met with face to face with... Mayumi? She seemed really pale, and she looked down at the ground with her hands slightly trembling. Her eyes were darting all over the place, looking everywhere but at me. Mayumi? Are you okay? Um, well you see, I was walking around on the second floor, just to explore and see the exhibits. On my way back to m my room, I s saw something really strange. Mayumi, what are you trying to get at exactly? Beating around the bush isn't really helping much. Right, sorry. B but I think s something might be seriously wrong. W wait what? What do you mean by that? I saw Seiji's b bedroom door slightly uh, open. I d don't think that d door w would just b be left open suddenly when when no one uses it except for for Seiji. Okay, did you happen to look inside his room to figure out why you felt this way? In all honesty, I, I did, did not. I had a really b bad feeling about it. That is really peculiar. I'm afraid to say that we may have to investigate it, whether we like the outcome or not. I honestly did, don't want to go anywhere near his room, but I can go tell the others if you want. If you could, then that'd be appreciated. I'll go ahead then. Uh, okay, sure thing. I went out of my bedroom and started to walk towards Seiji's room. With each step I took, the feeling of unease crept up on me again, while my mind whirling away at the possible scenarios that could occur. Surely no one could have killed anyone, right? Everyone was getting along. At least that's what it seemed like to me. But as soon as I stopped in front of the door, I could see that it was opened. Just the slightest bit. With my heart pounding hard and fearing the worst, I took a few large deep breaths and pushed the slightly ajar door open. What I saw next was something I never thought I'd ever experience in my lifetime. And an overwhelming feeling of despair washed over me. I'm Josh Portillo, also known as Saitogami, and I play Azo Altera. I'm Nate Peach, and I play Keiko Araragi. I'm Bear, and I play Enjiro Asakura. I'm Krasnik99, and I play Sosuke Enomoto. I'm Alama Smiles, and I play Mayumi Hamasaki. I'm Zaki Suda, and I play Arisada Uchigawa. I'm Jeijitsu, and I play Maika Katayama. I'm Ali. And I play Chiharu Kitano. I'm Jaden the Edgy Boyo, or Jaden for short, and I play Seichi Kirogane. I'm Epic New Moon, and I play Liam Matsuda. I'm Haru, and I play Siri Natsume. I'm Fade, 
and I play Hideki Saito. I'm Via the Tortilla, and I play Yuko Nishihara. I'm Goonstar, and I voice Takuya Toyonaga. I'm Katie Gregory, and I play the narrator. ZR the Audio Project is directed by Crowdstar. The head writer is myself, Katie Gregory. We would like to thank all of our amazing crew who worked hard on this project, including writers, editors, and composers. You can see who worked on each episode down in the description. If you want to listen to the project as early as possible, we release three days early on Bandcamp. Download the app and go to their website and you can find us there. Diary entry number th- Dear diary, everything seems so peaceful. I really like this place. You know, my sister and I have been getting along a bit better than usual. Parents, same old deal, but at least I'm happy with her. It makes for a nice change.